Disney's already laying ground for a new Family Guy world. I was the It Boy in 2006. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times The Simpsons made fun of Family Guy. Your creator is TV's most beloved animation visionary. Seth McFarlane? Ah! Oh, your plan is insane! Perhaps, but not as insane as making that many shows. So if you don't want to see crude, lowbrow programming disappear from the airwaves, Please call now. For this list, we'll be looking at the funniest and most pointed moments where The Simpsons took a shot at Family Guy or otherwise humorously referenced the show. Which of these tickled your funny bone? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. A real Family Guy. I'm Gina. You touch my fence again and your puberty's gonna be very boring. When Bart is sent to juvenile hall in this episode, he escapes with a fellow inmate named Gina. Someone he has had a hard time getting along with. The next time my mom asks me to help around the house, I could come live with your family. <laughs> the two eventually get in a fight where Gina insults Bart by calling him a family guy. Mama's boy! Future skank! Family guy! The Simpsons episode aired in early 2004 at a time when Family Guy was gaining popularity through DVD sales and reruns on Adult Swim. So Gina calling Bart a family guy was a nice nod to the series that was experiencing a tremendous comeback after having been canceled. Number 9. Al Family Guy Gene During the end credits of Treehouse of Horror 16, Simpsons showrunner Al Gene gave himself spooky credits with Family Guy as his nickname. <laughs> It isn't entirely clear how the Family Guy moniker is supposed to be interpreted, but it seems to have been meant ironically. In interviews, Gene has been critical of Family Guy and its cutaway gags, so the nickname doesn't look like it's an homage. Oh my god, that's amazing! That's the coolest thing ever! Hey, I want to try! When Family Guy had its crossover with The Simpsons, Gene took issue with a joke involving assault, and he openly discussed with Simpsons producer James L. Brooks whether they should ask Family Guy writers to have the joke cut out. Number 8. Future Guy the Simpsons didn't limit their references to Family Guy to their TV show. There's also a dig at the animated sitcom in one of their books, Chief Wiggum's Book of Crime and Punishment. Well, we got everything we need on you. One chapter of this book is dedicated to the evidence locker in Wiggum's police department, and one of the items found there is a flat-screen TV playing Future Guy. This appears to be some show that blended Family Guy and Matt Groening's sci-fi classic Futurama by fusing characters from one show with the other. One of these fusions is Peter and Dr. Zoidberg, and the other looks like Brian and Nibbler. All we know is this will be in our nightmares tonight. Number 7. TV's Most Beloved Animation Visionary Another Simpsons reference to Family Guy outside of the TV show can be found in this video game released in 2007. This is one super fly crib. <laughs> in one level, Simpsons creator Matt Groening appears as an exaggerated version of himself who encounters Bart and Homer. Bitch, our creator is like a thousand foot Godzilla. Groening is incensed when Homer confuses him with Seth MacFarlane, the creator of Family Guy. Your creator is TV's most beloved animation visionary. Seth MacFarlane? Ah! Oh! While Seth MacFarlane had two successful animated sitcoms on the air around the time of this video game's release, no one would say that he had had a record with cartoons comparable to Matt Groening's just yet. Number 6. Family Guy World While The Simpsons family is staying in Florida on vacation, a hotel manager tells Bart and Lisa that Disney World is building a Family Guy World Park. We can't compete with the big boys. Disney's already laying ground for a new Family Guy world. It's actually something that's in the realm of possibility now that Disney owns 20th Century Studios. We then see construction of Family Guy world, where a photographer is taking pictures of people dressed in costumes of various Family Guy characters. Some of the attractions of the theme park include Soren over Quahog, Quagmires of the Caribbean, and Dump on Mag. Seth MacFarlane also sings Sinatra tunes. Not gonna lie, Family Guy World sounds kinda cool. I was the It Boy in 2006. Number 5. The Truth About Family Guy 
At a meeting with the CEO of Google Disney, Homer is filled in on a disturbing secret that a bunch of shows we all thought were widely watched are actually fake. You see, if people subscribe and don't watch, then we don't actually have to make the shows. We just need viewers to believe they can watch them. It's part of an elaborate scheme to make it look like there's more television content than there actually is. Your plan is insane! Perhaps, but not as insane as making that many shows. The CEO then shows a screen with a whole bunch of these fake shows, which includes Family Guy, in addition to the other Seth MacFarlane shows such as American Dad and The Orville. But before you think that the Simpsons writers are just taking shots at Seth MacFarlane, look at the top line and you'll see The Simpsons is included as one of the fake shows too. Number 4. Couch Gag This episode was the premiere of the 25th season of The Simpsons, and to celebrate, there was a special couch gag. <laughs> The Simpsons family was joined by various characters from the show, such as Mr. Burns, Ned Flanders, and Apu. Then the group got larger as they were joined by characters from other Fox shows, including the Griffins from Family Guy. However, Homer was turned away by the bouncer, even though it was his house where this event was taking place. The couch gag also included Cleveland's family, although they were on The Cleveland Show at the time. Number 3. PBS Pledge in an attempt to help out the struggling network, Betty White hosts a PBS-style pledge drive for Fox. With your donation, you'll receive this classic PBS tote bag. Or this umbrella, featuring a picture of our classic tote bag. To urge viewers to give money, she brings up the crude, lowbrow content the channel has to offer. As she says this, Family Guy is shown on the television suggesting that the show matches that description. So if you don't want to see crude, lowbrow programming disappear from the airwaves, please call now. Hello, Murdoch here. $10,000? You've saved my network. Wouldn't be the first time. Years later, Betty White would appear on Family Guy in the episode Peter Rodica, where she provided narration for an audiobook written by Peter Griffin. And fittingly, she was crude and lowbrow for that appearance. Welcome to Peter Rodica on tape. I'm Betty White reading The Hot Chick Who Was Italian or Maybe Some Kind of Spanish by Peter Griffin. Chapter 1. Oh God, you should have seen this one hot chick. She was totally Italian. Or maybe some kind of Spanish. <laughs> oh yeah, getting hot in here. Number 2. Homer Clones. In this Halloween segment, Homer has a magic hammock that can make clones of himself. Say hello to Madam S. What the? Through his carelessness, Homer's clones get a hold of the hammock and make clones of their own. As the scene pans out to the clones that are thus produced, Peter Griffin is shown as one of the clones. <laughs> Let's all go out for some frosty chocolate milkshakes. This implies that Peter is a lazy ripoff of Homer, a common knock on the Griffin patriarch. Sure, both are dim-witted, selfish oafs who love beer, wear white shirts, and are married with three kids, but okay, no, we do see where that's coming from. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the crimes of Family Guy. <gasps> Sideshow Bob! Sideshow Bob? Il fugitivo? Mm -hmm. To identify high profile criminals, an Italian police officer keeps a book that contains pictures of infamous criminals along with the crimes they committed. Among the criminals included in the book are Snake for Invasion di Casa and Mayor Quimby for Drinko Drivo. Peter Griffin is also listed for the crime of Plagiarismo, another example of the writers calling out Peter for being a copycat. Then Seth MacFarlane creation Stan Smith is shown as having committed Plagiarismo di Plagiarismo, making the accusation that MacFarlane even ripped himself off. Roberto, is this true? Do you agree with our picks? 
Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.